welcome back everybody this is Panzer and we're gonna be working on car audio now moving forward with this vehicle I want to pretty much revamp the entire thing and that includes replacing which I've kind of already got a head start pretty much everything factory I'm not sure if you guys can see that there you go um, already took out pretty much everything on it the, na the, uh, the navigation unit or the radio navigation unit with the navigation exchanger, six CD, six disc CD changer, and the factory amplifier, all in excellent condition. Even the face and the buttons, everything looks good and pristine. Just kind of dated. And uh, when I'm driving with the roaster, the sound is a bit uh, not as loud as I would want it to be, especially with the top down. So I decided to eliminate the entire system. And I'm going to be installing a three-way component system, which is going to include a tweeter, or a one-inch tweeter, three-and-a-half-inch speaker, six-and-a-half-inch driver slash woofer, pretty beefy looking thing, and of course a 12-inch sub, and we'll get to that sub part in a minute. Now, location is key, and I'm going to be using the factory location with some factory wiring and some uh, uh, mounting points. And... Again, I kind of went ahead of this video and got everything kind of pre-done. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step on panel removal and all the little details, but it is going to cover, at least for this video, the fine points, which you need to know if you're going to do this job yourself, and of course, some radio installation tips. Now, this is not retaining anything factory, so everything's going to be redone other than factory speaker wire that's ran through the doors. Everything else is going to be tossed away. Obviously, we have our component system. This is the Harden Carmen speaker setup, which is an eight inch uh, flat style woofer with a reverse spider in the back. Now obviously this, this magnet's up here in the front where the cone and the surround's at. And then of course, three and a half inch driver right over here, our speaker. Pretty standard, dated equipment for the most part. Now, moving forward, I didn't think I was gonna be able to fix, uh, mount this in place or get it uh, uh, situated. But we can definitely, definitely do this. And reason why I know, I already did it. So if we go down to this setup here, this mount is secure, like you would not believe. Perfect, sealed and, well not completely sealed because you can see some holes there, but either way, the mount and location of it is gonna sit just like the factory, which is awesome. And there's no wiggle or looseness it's using some of the uh, some of the factory points that I had to kind of access from the opposite end, and of course create my own for at least this driver. But these two mounting points with some support clips on the inside of this housing work wonders. And obviously, this one I was able to uh, uh, to get into place. If I turn this around, which is very important, you can see on this end how I mount on some key points and others. Well, if I look over here, you can see how I had to drum a hole big enough to sit part of the, the edge of the, of the surround here, of the metal frame. So this thing is secure like you would not believe. A little bit of critiquing work with the Dremel. Had some fun, took my time, shaved out a bit of material, and I was able to get it to work. And as you can see, it is excellent. And now my only concern at this point is if with the factory uh, glass be able to clear and the door. The door I'm not too worried about because I can trim and shave from that speaker grill mesh. So obviously I can modify this one a little bit so I can see on the front clearance. I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about the glass. This woofer sticks out just a little bit but that little bit can mean a huge difference between uh, success or failure. Well we're gonna find out right now. Now obviously the key on. Position one. A little scared here. Awesome. Glass clears. Wonderful. This was a success. Now, one thing to note, every speaker is different. This one I got lucky, or, or rigged it in a sense, but it is secure and solid. I just had to kind of mount it in place, shaving off this end to angle it so this lip back here is flushed on, on this end and then obviously mounted here. 
using this hole. This is a factory mounting point right here where this screw's at. Uh, obviously, I just dremeled this cap off and I was able to access through there and it's, it's, it's very strong and secure on that access point for one of the, the, the little bolts, or not bolts, the screws. Uh, and other than that, I used this around. I had to shave off some of this here just to kind of clear so this surround's not touching. I kind of overdid it. I kind of probably could have kept some material, but again, I was going little by little and I kind of went a little too fast. So I'm going to have to take my time on this one. This one's going to be a lot better. Uh, this should work pretty well because I can still use the factory wiring. Obviously, these are going to be extended over. This is going to be connected to this port. Obviously, I'm going to do a lot better job than this. And I'm still going to use the factory connector, which is the plan. We're going to be installing, obviously, an aftermarket radio as pretty much nothing in this car is going to remain stock. Now, a couple of things to note. <clears throat> this car comes with the NTG1, our navigation unit, head unit with Hardin Carmen. It is mostly fiber optic, which the amplifier being under the passenger foot well is right over here. Now, one thing to note, this also has a six CD changer. I don't have CDs. And it also has a CD navigation unit, which I typically don't like to use the ones on vehicles. I prefer the ones on the phones. That's just me. So I don't need it, but that's in the trunk, that navigation unit. And of course you can see it right over here. Now, a lot of this stuff is dated tech. And I'm pretty much just gonna go over what I did to install this head unit or this uh, unit itself. First of all, let me go ahead and uh, put this in. There you go. Don't worry, e-bakes in check. Now, obviously with that being said, I already have pretty much everything taken apart. Now this uh, head unit itself is just floating here. It's basically just a what do you call it? A uh, tablet, if you want to put it in that perspective. That's basically what it is. But it's got some good features on it and good power. Now, one thing to note is if you ever take off the navigation unit or the head unit, this amp will constantly run and drain your battery. So make sure you just unplug the power, which is this cable right over here. And I'm pretty much going to remove it anyway. Now, the only benefit to this section, which I'm mostly interested in, is the wiring. And I mean the speaker wiring, which is right over here. This chunky cable here pretty much connects to, should connect to at least all the speakers. I believe this is for all the speakers that go from the amp to the doors. So I don't have to run wire, I just have to tap into here. I'm gonna take this out as well. Have a little bit more space in there. And to get to this part, I'm, I'm gonna be replacing this also since this is gonna go black. Now, obviously when you're taking this off, <clears throat> anything electrical, you're gonna make sure you take this disconnected battery. For an added note also, you gotta be careful, there's a small airbag, but it appears to be an airbag right underneath this. So be very careful. It's tethered in the back here, so even if you do drop this, it's not gonna strain the cable, obviously, so you're okay there. It's mainly these two cables that are in here. Now, to get this CD changer out, it's really only held by this plastic piece <clears throat> and this other piece here. If you notice these little tabs, there's a tab here, a tab here, and right over here as well. Including, I believe, one on the other side. I mean, I could be wrong. Yeah, one on the other side. Once you do that, you can start pushing it out. And then you're going to start pulling these tabs out until they come off. They'll pop out. They'll flex a little bit. They'll pop out. Once they come out, this bitch just slides out. Obviously, you just disconnect the fiber optic line and the power and ground remote, <clears throat> and you're good to go. Unit's out, and you now have a lot of space in your glove box. Now, of course, when you're trying to uh, figure out which wire is which, and you don't have a diagram, once you get the harness and you deep pin your first pair of wires, <clears throat> you're gonna use this method, which I, I learned from my audio days. Basically, just tap, obviously with the speakers in, of course, just gonna tap positive, negative, and you're gonna hear a crackle or a pop. Now, of course, <clears throat> this white harness right here is gonna be for the rear speakers that are in the back, which will be back there. Which is obviously gonna be the uh, brown and green line, and uh, well, it's in tan again. Now, one thing to note, the tweeter 
in the three and a half that sits right here running series as you can see they're both entwined right here so obviously if you do a test on this exact one right here you're going to get both of them going off so what i'm going to have to do since these run separate from mid-range to tweeter i'm going to have to run wire only for the tweeter though now i could definitely get in there by just running some wire down straight across and out to this end. You can see I already have my stick or my metric wand probe, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And I pull this gently, hopefully <coughs> this will grant me a wire. And there she is, right there. This is what I was able to come up with. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put the tweeters in the back or keep them in the factory location. The only down downside to these speakers is the tweeter itself uh, cannot be separated from its housing. It's a nice housing, but I was able to um, use this piece. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. What do you think? Yeah, it kind of stands out in an ugly way in my opinion, but I mean, it's going to have to do for now. But for now, that's where it's going to go. I mean, it won't look too bad, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's that side. Now i got to do this side over here. Now, for the amp placement, if you notice, I don't have a seat. It was going to be there. But there's certain mechanisms that are underneath the seat, especially for the motor, that are in the way. So... Unless I put it up against here, which I could, I'm actually going to put it in that location over there. So the, yes, the amp and crossovers are going in the factory location. So right now I'm pretty much just running the, the wire through. Got to get it through here. This is for the tweeter, of course. <clears throat> Obviously these I wires here, the blue and the red, are for the main six and a half. And the secondary, which are the tan are the brown and the peach or pink. <clears throat> and the pink wire are for the three and a half. Obviously they are in series with this tweeter, but this tweeter is gonna be deleted. And obviously this wire is just gonna be tucked away. So if it wasn't that way I would use it, but and it's not how the setup, at least not the setup I'm trying to do for the wiring. So I'm just going to run this to the amp side, which you should be able to do. Pretty simple. Since I have everything kind of taken apart, I can access that pretty, pretty easily. Now acquiring power is another deal altogether. And there are two grommets back here that I did not see. One's in use, one's not in use, at least for my car. I'm using the one that's not in use, <clears throat> and it's clearly, I had to just poke a hole and then run a, a rod through. That's pretty much it on the other side. See, one's in use, one's not in use. There's about three of them, actually, from the looks of it. And I'm making use of that one right there. That's going to be my power for my 8-gauge and 4-gauge, one for the sub-amp and one for the 4-channel. And just like that, I was able to get it in using that grommet. So now we got to do <clears throat> the other one. Now the good thing about the, buying the three-way speakers is that it kind of already gives you a good layout of how uh, this is going to be set up. Now for the amp, it's going to go in the factory location. It's about kind of the same size as the amp, slightly smaller. <clears throat> it actually fits on this uh, uh, bracket here. I just have to pretty much make new mounting holes for the screw ports to go into, but I'm pretty sure I can make some kind of bracket for it. I'm not too worried. I'm gonna test fit that later. Uh, obviously, it sits just like this, and the amp's gonna be underneath. Now, if I lay the amp, it's exactly how the amp sits. <laughs> Perfect size. 
pretty neat. But yeah, it's going to be sitting like that. Obviously, if it was the seat, it's kind of hard to do this with one hand, but if we do it like that, that's pretty much we'll see <clears throat> it with it being put, tucked away. Now, <clears throat> working at a very awkward angle is uncomfortable. Luckily, with the seat removed, I can get to this harness a little bit easier and comfortable. So pretty much deep pinning the harness is important. Obviously using the battery method, I'm able to pinpoint which one's positive. Obviously the one with the color and stripe is your positive lead. <clears throat> and then of course the solid color is your negative. Same for this one, positive. Obviously this thicker cable is for the woofer or the six and a half woofer that I have. That's where it's going to the factory location on the driver's side, which is red and um, looks like peach and then this bluish color. And then obviously the positive lead for the three and a half is gonna be brown with <clears throat> peach stripe and obviously peach ground. So this is pretty much that. I already ran the lead for uh, the tweeter on the driver's side. And these are the ones that I'm left with. And I'm pretty sure these ones right here are gonna be for the ones in that section, that little apartment, which I'm not gonna replace. Uh, at all. I'm just gonna leave them there for now. This harness has already done its purpose Since I already know what these are for I just gotta wire those up with These here Now pretty much after getting uh, these wires hooked up, sorry if the quality dropped a little bit, it is getting dark outside. But we have, uh, this is what it looks like at least for the wire sections hooked up. Don't worry, that's just taped to label. That white thing you're seeing there. <clears throat> Obviously for the main woofer for the driver's side, it's gonna be the red with a peach colored stripe and blue for ground. And then of course for the brown and peach stripe positive, is for the three and a half woofer with a peach ground. And obviously we have our uh, RAN wire for the tweeter. Uh, over here for the passenger side, we have obviously for the six and a half woofer is gonna be uh, brown with green stripe for positive and a green for negative. And then obviously for the three and a half is a brown and peach stripe with a peach um, it's a colored uh, ground. And then obviously a round wire for the tweeter on the on the uh, passenger side. All right, now that I got the wires in, I have it this long. So if I ever need to pull the amp out, I have that extension. Since those two crossovers there are going to be tucked away, got the amp situated. Uh, RCAs are going to go last. Obviously, the remote wire going to where the radio's at. Power and ground. Haven't put the ground in yet. All right, here's a quick rundown of this uh, radio. Now, this radio is meant for the SLK. Obviously, it has the, the dash to kind of mimic where the cup holder would be. I never had any use for cup holder, or for at least these cup holders, and they're pretty horrible. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're not really meant for water bottles or anything because they're literally up here on the top end. And doing turns eventually will just make things tip. So, no use for them. This one fills in that void instead of having that pocket, which I do not like. So obviously this unit comes with the latest Android 12 operating software. This unit also has uh, four gigabytes of uh, uh, DDR4 RAM <clears throat> and 64 gigabytes of ROM. Also it has an IPS touchscreen, which is pretty fluent and pretty good, pretty crisp. An OctaCore 7 processor. This unit is pretty fluent, very good on response time, looks very good and vibrant. Now the main thing is Canvas accessing that canvas port so the vehicle can communicate with the radio. Now this radio does come with a decoder itself. Pretty much the standard decoders that we normally use are these these aftermarket radios normally, normally come with. But it, they do the job. And they're pretty good at communicating all data, even more than what the standard units did prior. 
Now there's uh, about four keynotes you need to have uh, plugged in. You need power, ground, accessory, all three together. And then of course you need your canvas signal. That's basically it. Obviously, with the factory harness is right here. Now, everything looks kind of horrible, very horrible, but I'm doing this to test the rig and I'm doing some tests on it to see where I can connect everything to. Now, obviously this is the factory harness. You can see right over here, there is the orange cable, the fiber optic, and what used to be the actual power accessory and ground for the factory radio at the power from it which is this red wire and blue stripe cable that's your constant power it's always going to be on so <clears throat> if you're going to use this method make sure you have a, a proper accessory uh, mainly because I'm more worried about battery drain so I want to make sure it's at a proper accessory that I know that will shut off when the keys off and I'll get to that in a bit and all brown cable here is your ground. So obviously with these two cables connected to your power and ground to your radio, uh, well, you can see it right here, the yellow and the black connected over here to these two cables to the head unit. That's your one step. Second step is accessory. Now accessory is pretty simple, which is this red cable right over here. It's also labeled accessory from this radio, so that's pretty neat. I tied it into the cigarette lighter portion of the cigarette lighter. It's a pretty much a black and yellow cable. That's your power. Now that's power on only when you have the key in the ignition. That's going to be your accessory to signal for the radio to turn on with power and to completely shut off without power. The last connection point is canvas. Now there's uh, one method you can do accessing the canvas ports that are right here there's two of them it's going to be the first one for the interior it's right under this carpet so you'd have to take this panel take this side dash trim and this upper trim just to lift the carpet now other than that data bus uh, linkage that's over there on the driver's side the floor on the floorboard i'm going to access canvas through a canvas source already which is going to be this unit right here this piece right here is literally where you have your hazards your lock and unlock, your air scarf, and your heated seat options. You're going to see three connectors. The center connector is going to have your power, ground, and your CAN signal, high and low, or L and H. As you can see, I already tapped in, just as a test. You're going to see a red and blue striped. That's your power constant that's always on. You're always going to have active power on that unit. And on the second one here, you're going to have brown for ground. Then you're going to see two other brown cables next to it. That's your CAN bus input, high and low, or H and L. The one with the brown red, at least how it's labeled on this on this aftermarket uh, harness, CAN H. It's on the const on the all brown cable right over here. And then of course the CAN L is on this brown and red connector right over there. You can see it. Now, once you pretty much have those set up, you should be good to go. We're gonna plug in our, our key, turn in position two, radio turns on. Now check this out. Radio turns on for the phone. Another thing is, when I close the door and open the door, that's pretty neat, huh? Now, this is what it looks like <clears throat> all put together. Now, I know there's a lot of wires everywhere still, <clears throat> but I did the best I could in this amount of time. Pretty much, this is the extra length here, so when I pull the amp out, I can easily have enough slack to bring it all the way out over to this area so that's what that extra wire is in the bottom I'm not gonna zip tie that it's just loomed in the bottom obviously RCA's are going up to this side I might just tuck these really good so I'm probably gonna do that right now and then obviously your remote to the radio that wire up there the red one is from the driver side tweeter Obviously the passenger side tweeters from this end. The ground for the amp is right there. You can see that loomed part. 
<clears throat> here's the extra slack for the ground. And then of course, here are the components, or components, crossovers. They're just tucked away right there. Now obviously this is with the amp sealed away. Obviously it's behind this plate on another plate, <clears throat> but there's plenty of space back there. Uh, about five, almost six inches, holy shit. Almost six inches of, of space in between. So I mean, that should be enough for the amp to breathe a bit. Uh, and there's the finished product. So I had to, uh, Continue recording another day, mainly because it was getting dark. There's the radio. We're gonna go ahead and do a test here. Nice, nice. I already picked up pretty quick. Obviously, if I were to open my door, door open, jar, door jar, whatever. Closed, perfect, volume. Everything looks good. <clears throat> pretty good radio, I mean. <laughs> it does give you uh, how fast you're going, which is pretty neat, I guess. It's just information that it's picking up. It could even you can even have the the voltage and a bunch of other little features here displayed in the settings. Off that wire is there for the, obviously the amp that's gonna go in the back, which is the subwoofer amp and the RCA for it for signal. All that's gonna be ran accordingly. Obviously this is gonna run straight down the console to the back port. That's gonna stay along the edge to the very end. All right, so you can see where I probed through. It's right above that uh, airbag sensor or the sensor for uh, the seat belt. But if you look right below there, there's a piece of black metal there. That little opening is where you want to probe through at an upward angle. Once you do that, you'll see where it pokes through. Uh, let me get my hand in there first. I pull this carpeting a bit down. See it? Right there. Then, of course, you just run it underneath the carpeting, down into there, and into the location where your amp's going to go. Now, this is a 4 ohm sub that I'm going to be wiring to 2 ohm. So basically, you're going to have your positive to positive lead to a positive out, your negative to a negative lead to a negative out. Each one of these is connect to one side, and that's going to bring from 4 to 2. That amp could push around 350 RMS power by 2 ohm. That's the max it can do on that, and at 4 ohm, it does about 250. So, not by much, but I don't want to push too much anyway. This is rated at 450 RMS. So basically, this sub range should be good. It's still under its max RMS range. So, longevity wise it should last. This is an entry-level DS18. Uh, so, pretty basic, but we'll do the job in that small space. Don't need much. And that's the plan. <clears throat> Alright, so pretty much I have all the wire ran for the amp. I got my power... I got my ground, which is mounted back over here. RCA's ran, speaker wire ran, sub in place, and uh, don't forget your base knob, that's important. Now, the base knob I have over here. I'm gonna mount it, just keep it mounted in place right there. And of course, that's pretty much it. Now I'm gonna test it, make sure everything turns on. All right, power's ran for both amps. Looking good so far. Now, of course, uh, the test was successful, and this is the final product. Now, I was going to mount it up up top, but I didn't, I don't know. It just didn't suit well with me how it was looking. So, I mounted it here. And if you're asking, I did not bolt it on to that metal back plate. I did not. What I did was, I used this carpeting. Now, those who own these cars, this carpeting is thick. Very, very thick. And it's strong enough to hold an amp of this size. So what I did was put a bolt and put a, um, a clip on the other end to sandwich it together. So this thing is literally held, if I look at it closely, it's held by the fabric only. 
not by the metal plate. I didn't drill through the metal plate mainly because of the fuse box here that sits here on the back end as well as other wires and electronics in the back. So didn't want to do any damage to that or risk it. So this is where I'm at and the final product sub sits flat here on the ground. It is bracketed in place. Gonna obviously put a plexiglass cover with a one with a one inch, uh, about two inch uh, height here, a spacer, so it overlays and it kind of flushes in with this piece here. So I can still use my trunk. But overall, this is the finished product. Not too bad. The next project is gonna be getting rid of this. And of course, blocking out these pieces here. But that's going to be the, on the next project. I'm looking forward for that. Anyways, this is Panzer. You guys take it easy.